Hey everybody, welcome to Mini Beginner's Crash Course to Elasticsearch and Kibana. My name is Lisa Jung and I'm a developer advocate at Elastic. So this is a series of short videos for developers who want to get started with Elasticsearch and Kibana. In episode two, we talked about scenarios when you would consider using Elasticsearch and Kibana. In today's episode, we'll talk about the basic architecture of Elasticsearch and go over concepts such as nodes, clusters, and shards. As you know, Elasticsearch, Kibana, and integrations make up the Elastic stack. Among these, Elasticsearch is considered as the heart of the Elastic stack, and it serves as a powerful search and analytics engine. It's also known for its distributed nature, speed, and scalability, and this is due to its unique architecture. When Elasticsearch is up and running, you now have an instance of Elasticsearch, also known as Node. Each node has a unique ID and a name, and it belongs to a single cluster. We'll get to what that is in a bit. Now, when you start up a node, a cluster is formed automatically, and you can have one to many nodes in a cluster. These nodes are distributed across separate machines, but they all belong to the same cluster and work together to accomplish a task. So let's really bring this concept home. So think about a team that you've been a part of. Your team consists of multiple members who all work together to accomplish a common goal. And your team could divide and conquer by assigning each member one or multiple roles. And these are the roles that you're gonna specialize in. Now your team members may work in different buildings, but you all still belong to the same team. And this analogy directly applies to nodes in a cluster. For example, nodes are members of a cluster that share a common goal. Nodes are distributed across separate machines, but they're still part of the same cluster. Nodes are assigned to one or multiple roles. And one of the roles that a node could be assigned to is to hold data. And that is what we'll be focusing on today. So data is stored in Elasticsearch as documents. And a document is a JSON object that contains whatever data you want to store in Elasticsearch. So let's say we're running an online grocery shop app and we're helping our customers search for grocery items online. So we need to store grocery data in Elasticsearch. Now, a document for one grocery item would look like this. In a JSON object, it contains a list of fields or key value pairs. For example, it has a name of the product, the category it belongs in, its brand, and price. And things are easier to find when you group them in a logical manner. And documents that share similar traits and are logically related to each other are grouped into an index. For example, documents of clementines and carrots would be grouped under the produce index. The documents of Malbec and IPAs would be grouped under the wine and beer index. So to sum it up, indices are used to group documents that are related to each other so we know where to find certain information. So let's delve into this a little bit more. Here we have a cluster of nodes and we have a produce index and a wine and beer index. Here, the index is not actually storing documents. It's just a virtual thing that keeps track of where documents are stored. You can't find index on disk. What actually exists on disk is a shard. Shard is where data is stored, and this is where you run a search. Now, when you create an index, one shard comes with it by default. You could also configure it so that you could create an index with multiple shards that are distributed across nodes. This is a practice called sharding, and there are a lot of superpowers that come with this practice. So let's say you have a cluster that looks like this, and you want to create a produce index that will keep track of all produce documents. When you create an index, one shard is created by default, and the shard is assigned to a node. Now remember, shard is where documents are stored, 
The number of documents a shard could hold depends on the capacity of the node. So let's say you want to index 600,000 documents in your produce index. But the node where the shard is assigned to could only hold 200,000 documents. Well, that's not going to work, right? But we do have two more nodes which can hold 200,000 documents each. So what you can do is you could add two additional shards in the index and distribute them across these nodes. Each shard could hold 200,000 documents, so together they could hold 600,000 produced documents. Now that is all fine and dandy, but our produce data is only going to grow. So how are we going to adapt to increasing amount of data? Well, that is the beauty of sharding. So you could add more shards and nodes as the need arises. So you could horizontally scale and adapt to increasing amount of data. But that's not the only superpower that comes with sharding. Remember, shard is where you store documents and it's also where you run search. So let's talk about a scenario where the client is sending a search request for pink lady apples. In this scenario, you have one shard in a node that could hold the entire produce index. Let's say this produce index keeps track of 500,000 documents. And we're going to run a search in this single shard, meaning we'll go through 500,000 documents sequentially. So let's say it takes you about 10 seconds to do that. Now this time, we're going to run the same search with a different setup. We'll have 10 shards distributed across 10 nodes, and we'll distribute 500,000 documents across 10 shards so that each shard holds 50,000 documents each. Now in the previous scenario, it took us 10 seconds to sequentially search through 500,000 documents. So if you do the math, running a search on 50,000 documents should take one second. Now, what's so cool about this setup is that you could run a search on all 10 of these shards at the same time in parallel. Now, guess how long it takes to search through 500,000 documents with this setup? One second. So as you can see, sharding could really speed up your search. Now, with the first setup, one node had to store all the info and process all incoming search. With this setup, we could only store as much data and process search requests as a single machine. With the second setup, we distributed data across shards and allow shards to process search requests in parallel. So not only do we have the capacity to store more data, we can now search at scale. So let's say everything is going well with our online grocery shop, but all of a sudden, one of our nodes goes down and our data is lost forever. That would suck, right? And we want to avoid this at all costs. So what we could do is we can make copies of the original shards and store its copies across different nodes. So look at nodes one and two. These nodes contain our original shards, also known as primary shards. That is what P stands for. Now we're going to make copies of each shard and store these in nodes 3 and 4. These are known as replica shards. That is what R stands for. So R0 is a replica shard of primary shard 0, and R1 is a replica shard of primary shard 1. So what this does is that if one node goes down, everything's okay because we have a replica of our data somewhere else. Now that's not all. There's an additional superpower that comes with replica shards, and that is improving the performance of your search. So let's say you have two primary shards distributed across two nodes, and you're currently getting 2,000 search requests per second, and these search requests are being ran in these two primary shards. And as our app is getting more popular, the search requests have now increased to 8,000 requests per second. And because of that, your two primary shards are having trouble keeping up with the demand.
To solve this, you could add more nodes and increase the number of replica shards of P0 and P1. And remember, these replicas are identical copies of the primary shards. With a new setup, these replica shards can pick up the slack, and your cluster can better handle increased demands on search. All right, so we just went over the basic architecture of Elasticsearch, where we talked about concepts such as nodes, clusters, and shards. So the content we covered is an excerpt from the Beginner's Crash Course to Elasticsearch Part 1. Part 1 is a full-length workshop where I cover the use cases of the Elastic Stack, when you should consider using Elasticsearch and Kibana, and how to set up and run these two products to perform CRUD operations. So if you prefer the full-length workshop format, check out the link shown on the screen, and the link is also included in the description of this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Mini Beginner's Crash Course to Elasticsearch and Kibana.